heard this before, but I think it's becoming more apparent as we're getting closer to 2024 that Joe Biden's numbers with black voters is not doing too well. It's continuing to decrease. I covered this uh, about a month or two ago, but it has not improved since then. And now there are people that are part of the Democrat establishment that are starting to worry because they know that the Democratic Party cannot win without the African American vote. So I want to get started with this clip from Case Study QB. There's two of them. The first one is Black voters are not enthusiastic about Biden's second term. So shout out to Case Study QB for this clip. Let's go ahead and dive into this one first. Joe Biden became the first Democrat to win a presidential election in Georgia since 1992 when he won in 2020. And just to show how crucial black voters were to that win. I'm just going to pause here because I want you to see her title and then we'll go back. Bloomberg White House reporter. So just keep in mind who she works for when you hear the talking points. So let's go back a little bit. Georgia since 1992 when he won in 2020. And just to show how crucial black voters were to that win, by our calculations, if less than 1% of black voters stayed home or voted for Trump, the outcome of this election could have been very different. And basically something that we heard on the ground from the director of organizer from the New Georgia Project, which is easily pushing the largest voters registration efforts in the state. They registered about 30,000 people alone this year. He said people are just frankly not running and jumping about another term of President Biden. And they're frankly. But they weren't running and jumping in the beginning either. Uh, I just want to interject here for just a second to make something very, very clear. It wasn't so much that people were enthusiastic about voting for Joe Biden in 2020. It was more so that people were enthusiastic about voting against Donald Trump. So it wasn't so much that Joe Biden was this phenomenal candidate, like, like, like how a Bernie Sanders was when he ran right in 2020 and 2016. It wasn't like people were that passionately invested in a Joe Biden presidency or the possibility of it. It was more so that people were just really passionate about not having Donald Trump serve a second term. And that's what we have to understand. So here we are going into 2024 and they are concerned because they noticed that black support under Joe Biden has decreased. It's been decreasing since the beginning of this year. Actually, I think it started in December of last year. It's continued to decrease, but also they realize, you know, we've been talking to black voters and they're just not enthusiastic about Joe Biden. I just want to remind you, it's not necessarily that people were enthusiastic about him last time either. We were just voting, you know, against Donald Trump. And I think that just needs to be brought up again. Go back a little bit. Here we go. And jumping about another term of President Biden. And they're frankly keeping their options open. And that's something that I heard from voters consistently is that while they're aware that Joe Biden could be the default, they're still wanting to see who else could potentially get in this race. At least one voter told me they were considering Cornell West. But the majority of people here said, even though they may just be voting for Joe Biden in the end of this, their big concerns right now is the economy. They're still feeling the stress of inflation and jobs are drying up in the state. Even though we've seen some of this good economic data, we just haven't seen those perceptions seem to catch up yet. And as you mentioned, these unfulfilled promises. Pause here for a second. So I want to remind you again, she's talking about Georgia, right? So Joe Biden won Georgia. I still say that Georgia is a red state. I don't believe that Georgia is a swing state. I believe Georgia is still a red state. And then there were a lot of black voters or non-voters that were mobilized by people like Stacey Abrams to get them to come out and register to vote so that you don't get Donald Trump again. I think that's where a lot of that energy uh, came from. That being said, it is very possible that the Democrats could lose Georgia in 2024. Again, like I said, I don't want people to have this perception that Georgia is just this vastly blue state. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's really not. 
And some people could decide to stay home. You know, the ones that showed up in 2020 in the end could decide to, to stay home. So that is a possibility. So what happens if Joe Biden loses Georgia? Well, then you can look at a state like Arizona. That was another one uh, that he was able to win. And I think it's a mistake uh, for the Democrat establishment to kind of just not focus on Arizona. There have been a lot of talks about Georgia, how he has to keep Georgia. You have to mobilize those voters there. And I feel like Arizona, in a sense, has been neglected. Now, I don't know if they've just already you know, threw their hands up in the air and decided that they're not going to have a chance to get Arizona again. They don't think it is a reality, but I don't think any state should be overlooked, but particularly one like Arizona that did have a lot of independent voters that did show up to vote for Joe Biden. So I think it's a mistake that they're focusing so heavily on Georgia. And then there's also Pennsylvania that you have to keep in mind as well. It's very possible that Biden could lose Pennsylvania. So I think these are just some of the things that we have to keep in mind. Uh, but she's going to get into the unfulfilled promises, which I think is uh, on a lot of people's mind. Uh, the economy, of course, the number one issue. And this is why I say, like, you cannot continue just to tell people these lies that you economically change their life going forward by the little bit of crumbs that you gave them, like the American Rescue Act or the child tax credit that you ended early. So I think that these things people will remember. Now, whether or not that affects if black voters still show up to vote for Joe Biden in 2024, we'll have to wait and see. But I would not ignore those other states like Arizona and Pennsylvania in the event that Georgia does not pan out. That's just me. That's what, what I would do if I were running. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's what I would do. But I'm not the one running. Let me move this back a little bit here. You mentioned these unfulfilled promises. Student debt was something that we heard consistently from voters that they really wanted to see that policy come to fruition. But obviously, after the Supreme Court struck it down, we know Biden is trying again. But they were really disappointed that that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. And Georgia is important, of course on its own, but this seems to be also a microcosm of, of what's happening across the country. We know that uh, black Republicans made some inroads with particularly black men last. We're gonna pause here for a second. Biden's 24 bid poses new challenge in Battleground, Georgia. So you saw that one and I wanna take it back to the other one that they showed really quickly. Biden told Georgia voters he was up to the task on voting rights. They aren't all feeling it. So that's important to see as well. And then he's going to bring up black men. And this is going to take us into a whole other territory here on its own. But this seems to be also a microcosm of, of what's happening across the country. We know that uh, black Republicans made some inroads with particularly black men last time around. We know that this president, despite um, a very impressive track record, it suffers from a lack of enthusiasm from a lot of Democratic voters. So you know, talk, talk to us a little bit about how this could be worrisome beyond the borders of Georgia, but in other battleground states. So I just want to chime in for just a second and explain that if we remember going back to 2020, particularly in Georgia, um, since they're focusing on that state, it was mainly black women that showed up to vote for Joe Biden. Yeah, there were black men that did vote. But if you look at the numbers, it was overwhelming support from black women that came out to vote for Joe Biden. I just want to say this because they are already starting to do this blame game with black men. It's starting early and I'm going to point this out in another clip as well, but I want people to pay attention to this because they're looking to blame anyone. They're looking to blame Cornell West for running third party. They're looking to blame people like Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. for running uh, in the Democratic Party trying to primary challenge Joe Biden. They're looking to blame this no labels uh, party, which somehow is supposed to have ballot access, which I have not seen <laughs> yet. Um, but, and if it comes down to it, they're even looking to blame black men. Wait for it. Absolutely. That's something that someone brought up to us is like, when there is 
an enthusiasm gap, you need to pay attention to it. I think this was a problem for Hillary Clinton in 2016. She was not able to galvanize enough black voters to get behind her. And continuously, black voters seem to be a litmus test for Democrats in this state. You need but I thought it was Jill Stein's fault that Hillary Clinton didn't win. <laughs> See, she's right here. Listen to this. In reference to Hillary Clinton. You need to pay attention to it. I think this was a problem for Hillary Clinton in 2016. She was not able to galvanize enough black voters to get behind her. And that was Hillary Clinton's fault. She was not. She was not. Even compared to what the polls showed, Compared to election night, people stayed home. <laughs> people stayed home. So, yeah, I, it was nice to hear someone say that on mainstream media instead of blaming Jill Stein. Continuously, black voters seem to be a litmus test for Democrats in this state. You need to be able to secure and motivate the black vote in order to win in national elections. And something that people raise a concern about is Biden hasn't been in the state very much. He's been there three times since he's taken office. He's been to other swing states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, a lot more. And there's also concerns about investment. A lot of these groups said that they're not seeing investment until the October before a major election. And black voters really need to see sincere and continuous engagement in order to feel like their vote matters. And they're not just being thought of every four years. And then their promises, right. their priorities are forgotten for the next four years. Right. You can't just come around when it's time for your reelection. And that's typically what tends to happen. Like you can't just show up. You can't just ignore people the entire, you know, term that you have, whether you're a, a president or a congressman, city councilors as well. They do this, too. You can't just ignore all those people who came out to support you, your constituents, until it's time for you to run for reelection again. And it's, that's oftentimes what will happen. Now, there's another part of this this interview that I do want to show you as well. Also, shout out to Case Study QB asking if the Biden campaign is aware of black voters potentially supporting Cornell West and how to keep those voters in line. I want you to pay attention to the vocabulary that they're they're using and how they talk about black voters. Listen to this. And you mentioned Cornell West, who by any measure is a pretty fringe candidate, but there's that word again, fringe. Anything outside of the duopoly, fringe. Anything outside of the status quo, fringe. They continue to use that. I told you they all have the same PR talking points. That's why you can literally listen to CNN, MSNBC. You'll hear the same thing. They use the same terms. We all remember Jill Stein in 2016. If West even pulls off a sliver of voters, black voters in particular, that could be the difference in some of these states. So, so tell us what. But this is a common misconception. It's not like Jill Stein pulled voters away from Hillary Clinton. And we've explained this multiple times. Jill Stein, the voters who supported her would not have supported Hillary Clinton. This idea that this third party candidate comes in and they're taking away people from Joe Biden or they're taking away people from Hillary Clinton, that is not the case. Those people would not have voted for them even if there wasn't a third party candidate. And we've talked about this before. I talked about this on Rising. Uh, Robbie talked about this in reference to Gary Johnson as well. He said he would not have supported Donald Trump if Gary Johnson had not been in the race. This is a common misconception, but I don't think it's a misconception in reference to mainstream media. I think they know this because it's been said on their show multiple times before. They are repeating that talking point to instill fear in the American people. That is what they are doing. And they're going to continue to say that so that you get, you become afraid and you will not vote for a third party candidate. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. So this idea of him saying that Jill Stein pulled away these black voters from Hillary Clinton. No, she didn't. It's the way they talk about us as if like. We are the property of the Democratic Party. As if we we belong to the Democratic Party, as if the Democratic Party owns us. Let me continue. 
we'll go back a little bit so you can hear that part again in some of these states. So so tell us, what's the Biden campaigns? Are they aware of this potential issue? And what's their plan to try to make sure they keep those voters in line? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? And she's sitting right there. So she's on this show. Listen to what he just said. No pushback. Watch. Watch this. Listen to the way that they talk about us. And I, I seriously don't understand how more people don't have a problem with this rhetoric. Listen to Potential this. Potential issue and what's their plan to try to make sure they keep those voters in line? To make sure they keep those voters in line. As if black voters are misbehaving if they choose not to come out and support Joe Biden again. What? If we choose to vote third party, if we choose to sit at home, we're misbehaving. They need to keep us in line. As if they own us. She's not going to push back on that rhetoric, by the way. She's not going to push back on that. That's right, Sean. Keep those people in line. Exactly. And she's not going to push back. But again, she's with Bloomberg. So keep that in mind. Listen to this. Certainly strategists have raised concerns about third party candidates, not just Cornell West, but also the snow labels candidates that we're hearing about. But I think the thing that the Biden world is banking on is Donald Trump. Their hope is that if he is, in fact, the nominee, that will galvanize people in the same way that it did in 2020. I disagree with that a little bit, because if that were the case, they wouldn't they wouldn't be trying to go after Donald Trump so hard right now with all these different indictments. We'll talk about another one tomorrow. There's a new indictment with all these different indictments so that he does not run again if they weren't concerned that he could win again. Because think about this for a second. This isn't 2020 anymore. Now we've had four years of Donald Trump and we're going on four years of Joe Biden. Now we've had both. And economically, people are not doing well for the most part. Working class people, potentially, are not doing well for the most part. So the fact that now we have had both and people are able to look at their, their bank accounts and look at their, their, their pocketbook and see like, look, this is not going out, working out for me. We still have to deal with inflation. The grocery store prices are still high. This is this is still a problem. The economy is still a problem. So to that, I say, if the Democratic Party is banking on Donald Trump being the nominee, then why are they working so hard to prevent that from happening in the first place? And if they're banking on Donald Trump being the nominee, I would say that that is a bad strategy if they actually want to win because Donald Trump is doing really well in the polls. Every time he gets another indictment, his poll results increase every time. So I think if they're trying to recreate that same magic and energy that they had in 2020 about you can't get Trump again, so you're going to come flock to Joe Biden, I think that would be a mistake this time around. Let me let her continue. There was voters who purely cast a vote against Donald Trump, and they're hoping that threats to democracy and him being on the ballot again will have the same effect that it did then. But it won't because that was before we had a Biden presidency. You see back then during that time for the people who the, the people who voted out of fear, the people were like, "Man, I really don't like either one of them, but I'm going to go vote for Biden because I don't want to get Trump again." That was before we had Joe Biden as president. We have now lived under Joe Biden's presidency. So I, I don't know what kind of magic they're trying to recreate but it doesn't look so well. Last time we looked at the polls, it's like, what, 69% of the American people don't even want Joe Biden to run again. And there's also the possibility, which came out earlier today, of Gavin Newsom possibly running a shadow campaign. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. But I just don't think that this is going to work the way it did before. Yeah, that certainly is something in some ways that the White House is counting on. Dynamics would change if the Republicans ended up with a candidate that wasn't Donald Trump. But poll suggests there's not real any sign of that. 
You know, it was just appalling to me the way he said, keep those voters in line. That made me feel some kind of way. And apparently it made Nick feel some kind of way too. Now, Nick is my comrade over at RBN. So Nick is already drawing attention to this. Democrats are already prepared to blame black men again for Trump winning. Liberals love blaming black men for their election failures. Meanwhile, Trump won the white woman vote in both 2016 and 2020. It's all about control. Democrats think they own us. So let's hear what Nick had to say in reference to this. This is crazy. People are finally leaving the Democratic Party plantation and it's about damn time. Oh, so that black Americans are losing faith in Joe Biden and the Democratic Party. My reaction to this is what the hell took you guys so damn long? It was Joe <clears throat> Biden and Barack Obama that tanked black wealth because of the way they handled the 2008 financial crisis. It was Jim Crow Joe who wrote the crime bill and created a police state that is occupying our communities. Black people are hammered by these anti-black policies and we never get a black agenda because the black community rendered themselves completely irrelevant by voting for one party at around an 80 to 90% clip. Black people need to stop listening to liberals and establish our own self-determination as a political voting bloc. We need to say loudly and boldly that without any black agenda, there is no black vote. Period. Period. We're, we're the only group. We're the only group that does this. It's just like, okay, yeah, you don't have anything for us. No, no black agenda, no policies in reference to the black community at all, but we'll just come out and support you anyway, because Republicans are bad. We don't get anything. And, and you wonder like, how long is this supposed to continue? Because we will not always be the group that the democratic party is going to depend on in order to win. Mark my words, 10, 15 years from now, it will eventually get to the point where they won't need our vote in order to win. The Democratic Party is focusing on other groups, believe it or not, other, other groups and trying to capture those groups because they hear the frustrations from the black community. They hear people asking for things like reparations. They hear those things and they're starting to realize, uh-oh, you know, we're starting to lose some black voters to the Republican Party. Some of them are walking away from the political space altogether and choosing not to vote. We have to tap into some of those other groups. And I believe that the group that they're really trying to win over is going to be the Latino community. I think they're going to try to win them over. They are the largest minority population in the United States. We're not. So strategically, if you're looking at the numbers, that actually makes sense. I think that's what they're going to do. And if that happens, then we would have missed our chance to try to get any type of concessions from the Democratic Party. We're not getting anything. And once they don't need us, then they're really not going to hear us. Just something to think about. Let me let Nick finish. Black agenda, there is no black vote. And the funny thing is, this is how every single community behaves. But for some reason, Black Americans are the only people expected to just give up their vote without any sort of policy demands. Every election, there is a bidding war over the support of suburban white women. Despite the fact that white women vote for Donald Trump twice, the liberal establishment keep blaming Black men for Donald Trump winning. That's because liberals believe they own us. They believe we are obligated to support them. This is why we need a black led third party in order to break away from the two party duopoly as a people. There you go. That's right. That part right there. We need to break away. And this is what I'm saying. Like, now I'm not telling you break away and go to the Republican party, but I am telling you that this ownership mentality, we just can't continue to do this anymore. This is the article that Nick was referring to in that video, which I think is important for people to see. Some black men lose faith in Biden, Democrats in 2024. So let's go on here. It says Bata, a 28 year old in the key voting state of Georgia is among the millions of black voters who helped deliver President Joe Biden the White House in 2020. Three years later, he is one of the voters who Democrats fear could cost Biden a second term. 
could cost. Again, let's pay attention to the vocabulary. Biden will cost his own self like this second term. That's his fault. I mean, they say this as if they say this as if it's owed to him. I, that's the weird part to me. They say this as if we're just supposed to give it, give it to him just because he's already there. Cost him the election. This is a hot mess. Disappointed by what he sees as Democrats lurch to the left, free spending and empty promises, but also turned off by far right Republicans. He goes on to say he sees nothing but bad options at the ballot box next year. What I'm noticing across the Democratic Party right now is there's a lot of pandering to the black community. I agree. It seems like they do a lot to try to make it seem like they are the party for young black men or black men as a whole, but they don't back it with anything. They don't follow through. Long the most loyal Democratic constituency, black voters played a large role in rescuing Biden's struggling 2020 presidential campaign in the South Carolina primary and sending him to the White House with Democrats in control of the Senate thanks to further success in Georgia. In return, many black voters expected Biden and Democrats to push new federal protections against restrictive local voting laws, police and criminal injustice reform, student loan debt relief, and economic empowerment. Two of problems with two of these, the criminal justice reform and the student loan debt relief. Criminal justice reform. Joe Biden's the architect of the crime bill. This is why I did not expect this from him. Student loan debt relief. Joe Biden is the one who wrote the, the legislation that prevents you from filing bankruptcy on student loans. That's why I didn't expect much from him for anything. This is not the type of person to deliver on these demands. You can blame him for some of the problems that we have with it. Many of those efforts have been blocked by Republicans leaving Biden to ask voters to let him finish the job with a second term with no clear path to get these things done. Finish the job with the second term. It can still be blocked by Republicans and it's not just Republicans who have been blocking it. And this is the thing about some of these outlets like Reuters, Politico, that it just irks me when they make these kind of statements because they're ignoring the fact that you also have Democrat politicians who have also voted against things like the $15 minimum wage. Seven Democrats and one independent voted against it. But you never hear them mention that. Even when Bernie Sanders complained about that legislation, he said the Republicans blocked it. Bernie Sanders sit right there in the Senate. He knows damn well there were Democrats who voted against it. So he's learned to play their game too. On the other hand, Democrats focus on LGBTQ and abortion rights leaves voters like uh, McConnell feeling alienated. I'm probably getting turned away from the left just because the Democrats are turning more left in my books. So let's go ahead and issue a correction here. The Democratic Party is not left. <laughs> I don't know why people keep saying this. Polls and Reuters interviews show young black voters and black men of all ages are losing faith in Democrats, Biden and perhaps even the political process just three years after the U.S. biggest protest for racial justice and civil rights in a generation. Yeah, we had the George Floyd protests, but then what happened after that? The Democratic Party decided to give more money to the police. So, yeah, that's great. We had people out in the streets, but we didn't get anything. Let's continue. The vast majority of black voters, including men, are still expected to choose Biden over a Republican. But the question for Democrats is rather delusional, excuse me, disillusioned black voters will turn out to the polls in large enough numbers in crucial cities from Philadelphia to Atlanta, Milwaukee, Detroit, to keep Biden in the White House. Democrats need to understand that there is a growing population, especially with black men, who are reaching the point of being fed up with always being pushed over and looked over. That's coming from Leland, who's a political campaign manager who is running as a write-in candidate for Nashville City Council. Democrats' failure to secure widespread uh, student loan relief and legalized marijuana has been disappointing. First of all, both of these, I want to remind you, could have been done by executive order. 
Joe Biden can legalize marijuana by executive order, or at least to criminalize it. He could have done the student loan relief by executive order. So just FYI. Turnout drops. Self-identified Black Americans make up 14.2% of the U.S. population, or 42.7 million people, a 30% jump from 2000. These Americans are five years younger than the population as a whole, with an average of average age of 33, and Democrats earning their loyalty is crucial for the party to keep winning in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Georgia, and to recapture districts in the South in the future but they don't want to give you anything. They don't want to do anything for black communities. They want to implement legislation and policies that actually work against the black community, but they still want you to come out and vote for them. Why? Because they put on kente cloth and they kneeled after George Floyd was killed. They don't want to do anything. They don't do this for other groups. They don't do it for other groups. When the Latino community asks, for certain concessions, they give them those concessions, then they come out, right? Like you should be doing stuff for us now. You should be giving us concessions now, not after when you know you're not going to. No other group deals with this. Instead, the opposite is happening. Black voter turnout dropped by nearly 10 percentage points from 51.7% in the 2018 midterm elections to 42% in 2022. Let's take a look at that. White voter turnout slipped by only 1.5 points to 53.4. And if we look at the chart here, it says fewer black voters in the past election spell worry for Biden 2024 uh, bid. So if we look at presidential elections, you'll see still till this day, the highest black voter turnout, at least in, in my adult life, was for President Barack Obama in 08 and in 2012. You can see this here. So there's Obama. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll make this bigger for you guys. There we go. I just wanted to make it so you can see a little bit bigger. Um, but Barack Obama right here. And then if you look at the midterm elections, well, let's go to 2020 first. 2020, here's Joe Biden right here, right there. But Barack Obama still holds that record. Now, if we go to the midterm elections, 80% of voting age U.S. citizens, again, you'll see here's Barack Obama's president. So they show the turnout here from 08 going through. And then you see there's an increase here. I don't know why they numbered it this way. There's an increase here. And then you see it going back down again. That, that really does not surprise me. Black voters have participated in the U.S. presidential election at higher rates than the national average for over two decades. Black voter turnout was down across the country in 2022. But people told me that wasn't going to happen. And that's the thing. It's like, it's true. When the midterm elections happened last year, people didn't turn out the way that they did in 2020. Now, granted, most people show up to vote for the presidential election, but it's still down. It's going down. We saw it in the polls, the surveys, the exit polls, in every way you could measure it. That's coming from Michael McDonald, a politics professor at the University of Florida. Some Democrats have also been disturbed by recent polls showing that some black voters are defecting to Republicans. One in five black people under the age of 50 voted Republican in the 2022 midterms, roughly double the number of their elders. According to a previously unreported analysis of exit polling data, by HIT Strategies, a public opinion research firm aligned with the Democrats that routinely surveys Black Americans. Black men and women under the age of 50 voted Republican in similar numbers. Republican Donald Trump, 12%, share of the Black vote in 2020 was four percentage points higher than it was in 2016. A Reuters uh, Ipsos poll conducted in July 
found that 18% of black Americans would pick Trump over Biden in a hypothetical matchup. That's actually pretty high. 18%. Compared to 46% who favored Biden, including about one in four black men compared to about one in seven black women. So what does this show us, ladies and gentlemen? It shows us that things are starting to change politically, that the Democratic Party is obviously afraid that they're going to lose black voters and they're already losing black voters. But they're afraid, particularly that the support of black voters in 2020 is not going to be the same in 2024, that those numbers may decrease. And that is what they're afraid of. And I don't know what to tell you other than the fact that now we have had both. We had Trump and we had Biden and economically things are pretty bad right now. But black people don't belong to the Democratic Party. Like they need to lose this idea that they own us, that we're property, we're not. And I think the best way of doing that is by not voting for them. They're not giving you any concessions. Again, other groups don't do this. Thank you, Perry. Today, the African revolution is spreading to Senegal, why Nigeria and other neo-colonial stooges are preparing to send troops to Niger. Yeah, we talked about Niger yesterday. Or no, Monday, Tuesday. Yes, we talked about Niger on Tuesday. Saul says, no one's standing in line for eight hours again for Jim Crow Joe. It's over, bro. Outside Steeler fan, Arizona, he's not winning for sure again. Yeah, they're not, they don't even talk about Arizona anymore. Remember that? Thank you for the super chat, Roger. Dems never reached out to young black vote, only older black vote, especially women. They all that matters, the all that matters, the all that matters is that you vote block. Well, they're passing on. And Dems now left with a bunch of black, pissed off, Gen X, Millennial, and Gen Z. Yeah, that is true. Dwayne, I was a Jill Stein supporter and I would have never voted for Hil Hiltary in a million years. See? Yeah. Thank you, Laugh. Why do U.S. citizens who care about the poor and oppressed vote Biden? Not many watch MSM news anymore, so it's not Trump derangement. Are those voters rich and selfish or dumb? Some people still do have Trump derangement laugh, believe it or not. That still is a thing. Like some people still are afraid. They're like, oh God, no, no Donald Trump. So there is that. And people may not be watching mainstream media as much now, but give it time as we get closer to the election, that will change. Thank you for the super sticker, Fat Mantive. 